Y'all give it up for Sally and give it the first out of two black guys high five on the stage. Everybody else got a nice little dance and handshake. I got the high five, Black History Month. All right. Oh, thank y'all. Uh, feel great. Uh, I'm mad at the fact that I did it again and decided to dress exactly like the background. Uh, if it wasn't for these lights and this skin complexion, y'all wouldn't know where I was. If I smile, y'all gonna be like, is this a game of guess who? Where's Waldo? I don't know. What's going on? How y'all doing over there? Okay, good, good. Uh, sir, you have your arms folded. You make me nervous, please. If I am in Rosemont, there's nobody else here. There's only one black person that works here. Uh, and I don't even think he knew he was gonna be here today, okay? I don't think he knew he was gonna be here. <laughs> sir, loosen the... No, you good, man. I'm talking about the guy you with. You got your arms and hand, your hands in your lap and you look tight. I just need you to smile a little bit. Make it better for everybody in here. Namely me, okay? Because... This size Rosemont police real quick. I don't wanna deal with it. Oh. Please give it up for the diversity in the room. And by diversity, I mean me and three other black people in the back. All right. This side of the room seems a little bit tolerant. This side was like, I didn't know y'all was gonna be here. I didn't know it was gonna happen. I didn't pay for these tickets for that. I swear to God, this is not what they told me in the advertisement. I understand we're in the middle of February, but this is not what they told me. <laughs> I joke about it a lot with different races because I think life is too short for petty racism because no matter what, we all bleed the same. It's the truth. Thank you for clapping. Thank you for somebody for breaking the mold on that side. It was like, we tolerant now. It is, it's true. I think we all gotta get to know each other's cultures and races and differences, things like that. The reason I say that, I recently had a chance to date a white girl. Yes, the chocolate man will dip. <laughs> Size 13 and a half. What? Do you not hear me with the bass in the voice? What? Okay. <laughs> it was cool though, getting the data though. It was cool because I was her first black guy. She was my first white girl. She was so excited. She was like, oh my God, I've always wanted to date a black guy. I was like, oh my God, I've always wanted good credit. I had a cute little nickname for it too. When I introduced it to my buddies, I was like, what's up y'all, it's my baby A15. A15, this is the fellas. Don't y'all mess this up. You see how quiet he got on that side of the room again real quick? It was like, look, he's starting to talk about using credit scores. This ain't cool. We got to deal with this old Obamacare now. We got to deal with him using credit scores. This was not in my price of admission. But it's a joke though, like I said, you have to joke about it. Cause like you do, you gotta joke about it, cause life is too short for it. And I saw this documentary the other day, right? Where this, I knew he was a racist, white redneck guy, he needed a blood transfusion. And right before they took him in the room to do the procedure, he sat up off the gurney, he looked the doctor square in the eye and was like, make sure they don't put none of that colored blood in me. I was like, did he mean that red blood in the plastic bag hanging from the pole? <laughs> Cause it made me start to wonder and think like, what's the worst can happen to a white guy if you get some black blood in you? You wake up on a six piece fried chicken with mouth sauce, salt and pepper? You have an uncontrollable urge for flaming Hots with nacho cheese. Or worst case scenario, sir, you wanna watch all five seasons of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. What? What? Because if I get some white blood in me or any other blood in me, I'm not gonna ask those dumb questions. I'll ask real important things like, do they have AIDS? <laughs> no. Do they have the sugar? For those who don't know, the sugar is what we black people call diabetes and a lot of us think is contagious. Do they have the sugar? No. Well, let me ask you this really important question. Well, this white blood proof my credit score because I'm trying to get a loan on a car. The white chick I was dealing with didn't want to finance it. No. Because <laughs> we got to install these things into our kids' lives and everything. Like, I just recently had a newborn a couple months ago. You all are more excited than I am. Uh, only re only re only reason I say that is because I get the dummy and I watched my child be born. Yes, it is the most scariest thing on God's green earth.
Because women will always tell men this one little line, this, this, this series of lines. They'll say, it's a miracle of childbirth. You should watch it. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's natural. You don't have to look at it. <laughs> you don't. And the only reason I did it was because I have a son already, right? My son was born via C-section. Now, for those who don't know what that is, that's when they cut the mother open like a Thanksgiving ham, right? <laughs> they dig in deep, grab the baby, and raise him up like Simba in the Lion King. <laughs> Except Simba didn't have all that purple slime running up off of him. And then the doctors asked me, Mr. Washington, would you like to hold your son? And I'm like, yes, after y'all hose him down. <laughs> or run him through a car wash, one or the other. Just make sure you get the undercarriage under there. <laughs> Need to simonize the baby. But I decided to do it, right? And if anybody here, round of applause, you got kids, round of applause? Okay, round of applause, you have kids that you really like claiming. That went to one person. That is sad, when I said how many people got kids, it was four, I was like, that you like claiming, one. Uh, how many people got kids they like claiming because it's tax season? You ain't clapping, not damn time. I get the tax season, she's like, I love my little earned income credit. And you're like, oh, ma'am? But this is what happens when you, if you haven't had a kid, if you haven't had a chance to experience it, this is what happened. They bring you in the room, and the doctor's like, Mr. Washington, we're gonna take your wife, girlfriend, a baby mama, however you wrote her on the paper. <laughs> I had options. Uh, <laughs> they were like, we're gonna sit her in the bed, the nurse is gonna hold up one leg, and you got to hold up another, and it's kinda heavy, because it's a pregnant leg, so you got to balance yourself. They was like, you got to encourage her to push. I was like, that's it? They was like, yeah. I was like, okay, let me get set ready. She put on a little bit of weight. <laughs> All right, girl, you got this. Now push, push, push. <laughs> oh, God. Push. Push again. I don't think we saw that right. Oh God, that's a lot of hair down there. Keep pushing. Why do they have a slip and slide attached to a garbage bag up under you? It was the most horrible thing I have ever seen. And I've watched all of the Saw movies by myself. But after that traumatic experience, I can stand here and tell you all that I'm the proud father of a beautiful baby girl. I have my first daughter. Again, y'all are more excited than I am. Because I wanted another boy. Because if I had another boy, I could be like, that's my dude, my little man. We can kick and play football, basketball, baseball. I can power bomb him in six weeks and he can write the hell back up. But I got a little girl. I'm going to be this baby's bitch. I don't think y'all understand. I don't think you get it, because if you are a father with a daughter, you know that your daughter has you wrapped around her finger. And there's gonna come a point in time in life when my daughter's gonna ask me for something, I'm gonna try to tell her no, then she's gonna hit me with the eyes like the puppy dogs in the Sarah McLaughlin commercials at 3.15 in the morning. And I'm not trying to go through that. I'm not trying to have my daughter come to me and tell her something, Daddy, do you have the money I can get maybe $5? I'm like, baby, Daddy ain't got that type of money. <laughs> In the arms of an angel. Hey, baby, come on here and take daddy's last. Where the hell did that music come from? Y'all been great. My name is Jay Washington. Give it up for your host, Sally Edwards, y'all.